uh, Paisley Rechtel. Um, Paisley actually, uh, she teaches at the University of Utah and is the Utah Poet Laureate. Uh, she grew up in Seattle, Washington uh, as the daughter of Chinese American mother and a Norwegian father. Um, she earned a BA from the University of Washington, an MA from the University of Toronto Center for Medieval Studies, and an MFA from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Uh, she's the author of the poetry collections um, a, a Crash of Rhinos from 2000, um, Six Girls Without Pants, 2002, uh, The Invention of, a, of the Kaleidoscope, 2007, and Imaginary Vessels, 2016, as well as the book of essays, The Night My Mother Met Bruce Lee, Observations on Not Fitting In, in 2000. Uh, Rectal has been honored with the National Endowment of the Arts Fellowship, a Pushcart Prize, a Village Voice Writers on the Verge Award, and a Fulbright Fellowship to South Korea. Her work has been included in numerous anthologies, including Legitimate Dangers, American Poets of the New Century from 2006, uh, and the 2010 Pushcart Prize Anthology. So without further ado, welcome Paisley. There's also gonna be a lot of photos, so at some point you might wanna dim the lights for me as well. That'd be great, thank you. So I'm gonna actually perform a uh, part of I mean, what I was commissioned for, I'm the Utah State Poet Laureate, and one of the benefits of, I guess, passing or reading as white was that they didn't realize that they were going to get somebody uh, who might not provide them the poem that they had imagined in Utah. <laughs> um, when they came and approached me to, to, to co you know, were commissioned to create a poem that would commemorate the 150th uh, linking of the two railroads, I said, I will do this, but you need to know that it might not go the way you want it to go. <laughs> and they said, oh, that's totally great. <laughs> um, yeah, just I, as soon as I hit play, oh, okay. it, would, it should go, but yeah. Okay. Um, so the question, I spent an entire year reading pretty much nothing but stuff about the transcontinental and I too interested in issues of labor, um, issues of how the transcontinental both united and divided the country simultaneously. Obviously it united one nation but it also divided and led to the genocide of many other nations. Um, I'm also interested in workers' histories, I'm interested in the ways the transcontinental reframed ideas about uh, what is whiteness? Uh, who is white? Um, there ideas about race, nationhood, uh, masculinity, gender roles, things like that. I was really interested in all of it. So I created, the question was how to maintain or create um, a form that would be capacious enough to sort of speak to all of these different types of topics, workers' histories, ideas. And I started thinking about Angel Island and the Chinese Exclusion Act because these are, to me, linked events. And it will be explained when I hit the um, show. So I see this as, my work as a poet is an act of translation when I'm asked to present history to you. So I'm automatically translating the past into a form that you could imagine. And I take that both figuratively and literally in this project. So I'll be reading this is a tiny, tiny slice of a larger performance I'll be doing tomorrow night, um, and it's going to be part of an actual book length work called West, a translation.
as twi a dot art a denam minida. Ten of was he was in young. Then was the epivatus to travel in his Also, 有失英之父此來,天古含受天古恨,思向空對望向台,未曾作自迷讓土,知意紅心死不悔。Sorrowful news. Sorrowful news, sings a telegram. And Lincoln's body slides from D.C. to Springfield, his infant son, Willie, boxed beside him. Buffalo, Cleveland, Painesville, Ashtabula, two coffins, 1,700 miles, 14 days, on 14 railroads. One day, a great line will unite us, the president promised. Father and son displayed capital after capital, Louisville, New Albany, Baltimore, Chicago, the black train's beach upon a tide of roses. Can you believe still in the promise of this union? I saw, General Dodge wrote, a little Negro drop on his knees and offer prayers, while above the dark news thrums on wires, gone, 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 across poles tall as the ones from which the president once ordered 38 Sioux to be hung. Pass. Brigham Young hoped passing trades would enliven trade, while Congress hoped trade would pass polygamy from existence. Stanford didn't think the Chinese could pass muster, then used them to pass up the Irish, after which he wanted the Chinese out, passed over by law to keep them from passing for white. The work passed to Japanese, who were put in camps, then on to Mexicans, Navajo, Italians, Poles, Greeks, Swedes, each man passed into and out of some approximation of American. We cannot help but be benefited by it, wrote Brigham Young. A bond paid down per mile of track, Congress had to pass an act to make the building stop. It's in the past, but once these barons didn't plan to meet, they planned to win. Each side built right on past each other. Body. A carload passed last night, their bones returned in barrels marked pickles. Thick as bees, ants, locusts, celestials lay siege to nature in her strongest citadel. Their genius is imitation. Show them once to do a thing, and their education is complete. Wherever you put them, you'll find them good. They can withstand freezing, hunger, thirst, and heat. Their simple, narrow, but not dull lines running in old grooves. Congealed quantities, crystals of social substance. Unicated as boys or sodomites, they breed defunct in the heat of germs. They can be shipped to shore in great quantities. Even their clothes come, identical, studded with rivets. Have knowledge. Immigration questionnaire given to Chinese claiming to be former U.S. residents or for Chinese entering the country during the Chinese Exclusion Act. Have you ridden in a streetcar? Can you describe the taste of bread? Where are the Joss houses located in the city? Do Jackson Street and DuPont run in a circle or a line? What is the fruit your mother ate before she bore you? How many letters a year do you receive from your father? Of which material is your ancestral hall now built? How many water buffalo does your uncle own? 
Do you love him? Do you hate her? What kind of birds sang at your parents' wedding? What are the birth dates for each of your cousins? Did your brother die from starvation, work, or murder? Do you know the price of tea? Have you ever touched a stranger's face as he slept? Did it snow the year you first wintered in the desert? How much weight is a bucket and a hammer? Which store is opposite your grandmother's? Did you sleep with that man for money? Did you sleep with that man for love? Name the color and number of all your mother's dresses, now your village's rivers. What diseases of the heart do you carry? What country do you see when you think of your children? Does your sister ever write? In which direction does her front door face? How many steps did you take when you finally left her? How far did you walk before you looked back? Hold sorrow. Imagine a farm, a famine, your mother promised you'll learn tailoring. Imagine your father pocketing $600. Now, here's the boat, its black planks wet with fog. Here's the room holding a bed, no mirror, no wash basin. You have one window wired to face the street. He will keep his pants on, his greasy shirt, his shoes. Imagine the quarter pressed after into your palm. Your street will be named for presidents you never heard of, the city's lights like strings of blood in puddles. Imagine, if you could, You'd carve your father's name on a knife tip. At night, only the train cries. Your door locks from the outside. Miss Hull. Ways to die. Blasting accident. Derailment. Boiler crack. Crushed between trains crossing in the night. Electrocution. Bad food. Heart attack. You can work yourself to death, a la John, a la Henry, or you can stay at home and die anyway. Fist and loose club, gun, knife in the back, gossip, sharecropping, bottle of rum with gas-soaked rag. What is freedom but the power to choose where you won't die? What is a train but the self once yoked to terror loosed into a force that glides on heat and steam? You're so far from Mississippi, the P. Boss said when we hit Rock Springs. Don't you miss the home? Miss home, I told him. I'm hoping to miss it entirely. Nothing natural here but need. 
Our symbol, as you know, is the hive of bees, and yet in our strength of will, our numbers, perhaps our enemies might picture us like the locust, which arrives in waves to feed without satiety, which visits more regularly than rain and covers the earth, not out of spite, but because they will survive. Dear General, all this we have endured, and now you think we should not remind you of the debt we're owed, we who lobbied for this railroad, who agreed to unite this nation with you and bring the riches of the East West to tame its wilds? Do you wonder at our anger and our exigence? General, we worked your grading to monument point, and thousands drilled and blasted, rent the very foundations of the earth until these hills swarmed with our fresh encampments. We are patient, but we are fools. If we'd been a collection of mere individuals linked by money, long ago you'd have seen us crushed by weather, luck, and the Indian. Together in faith, we have brought this place to heal. We can do more. Even the locusts, which once again have come to plague us, make little dent in our labors. Their dark trails that waver in the heat like iron bars are merely a mirage. Our purchase dips and camper smell not like sweat and earth, but sweet water. They do not stifle nor blind us to the promise of the money your company offered, a promise which is gone now too many months unanswered. We are hungry for an answer, sir. We wait for your reply. Each morning, your railroad tunnel shakes with the reports of our artillery. You can hear them if you listen. The mountains reverberate from base to summit, bringing back our volleys with thunderous echoes, as if in anger. Earth, from the 1862 Railroad Act, Section 2, and Erasure. That the right of way through public lands granted to said company for the construction of railroad and telegraph, right, power, authority, hereby given to said company to take adjacent to the line, road, earth, stone, timber, Said right of way is granted to the extent the United States shall extinguish all lands falling and required for the said, with the welfare of the said, falling, required for the said, Indians the said, grant herein made. Not ash. Not gone, but changed. Not a body erased or born of grief, but praise. This country made us grow each another soul, not one for earth or heaven only, but nation. Electric, dangerous as a third whale. We, the middle kingdom, between white and its opposites, its thousand shades of fissure, our existence would compose into a fantasy of whole. Our bodies built more than a railroad. On my 1919 map, red, black, and yellow veins trace rails lengthwise across the states, the fragile paper splitting at its seams. Like any machine, we translate the magnitude of human force to change. We're history. Not silent, not invisible, not a dream. Not oil, they told me. The first trains ran on steam. We cannot count all the dead. This is the sound of a train. Then you must have invited to train the bees. Stay trained, you are invited to the cavalry. I have a train. This is the sound of a train. This is the sound of a train. This is the sound of a train. You may not ride on the railroad. Je n'ai pas de chien, je n'ai pas de chien, je n'ai pas de chien, je n'ai pas de chien.